wants to know how to Everybody wants to know how to box a southpaw. Everybody who's a southpaw wants to learn how to box the opposite stance. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna give away all the secrets. We're gonna teach you so many great things, man. And luckily, we got a guy right here who can box both stands, orthodox and southpaw, and fast in the chambers. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna learn a lot. You guys made a very wise decision, so let's not waste another time. Let's get right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a hell of a topic tonight. <clears throat> so I hope you guys are here live for this one. But if you're not here for live for this one, you watching and you're watching this later. Either way, man, this is going to be a very, very dope uh, show today. I'm really, really excited about it, man. We got Brian Jennings, you know, what I'm saying world class professional boxer, Brian Jennings, I should say. And uh, right now with all the craziness going on in the world. Um, he's dealing with some of that craziness right now and it's starting to come into the boxing world. So this is something that I definitely want to talk about, something definitely that I want to touch on. When I seen this, it got my attention, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I just felt like it's something that we had to talk about on the channel. We have to, we have to voice this, we have to get this out. So, you know, we're going to talk to Brian Jennings today. And uh, we're going to have some fun. So listen, another thing I want to say is, you know, with this whole COVID and the vaccine and the restrictions and everything, you know, I want you guys to voice your opinion. I want you guys to talk about how you feel. You know, there's, there's like two sides right now, right? You got the one side and the other side. It's kind of like politics. And uh, let's just keep it respectful. You know what I mean? You can feel how you want to feel. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? Uh but at the end of the day, let's be respectful because everybody is out here doing the best they can. You know what I mean? Nobody's out here trying to, you know, say one thing's better than the other. Well, there are people saying that, but at least over here, for me, you know what I mean? This is just everybody trying to do their best and whatever's best for them. You know what I mean? You got people who are vaccinated who feel that's the best thing for them. And then you got people who aren't vaccinated who feel like that's the best thing for them. So... You know, at the end of the day, I think with this whole COVID situation, everybody's just trying to do their best. You know what I mean? So we have to always keep that in mind. You know what I mean? I don't think anybody wants to hurt anybody, whether they're vaccinated or not. But I'm not going to sit here and waste a lot of your time talking about this, man. We're going to bring in the man of the hour, the one and only Brian Jennings. Brian, what's good, baby? Not much, man. Everything good, man. Just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. got my son off out here for a little, for like an hour, you know. Uh, uh, play time that way that way i could be able to conduct this uh this video well I, I appreciate you making time for this man you know you're going through some craziness but before we we talk about that man i want to talk a little bit about you man because you're an inspiring guy you know what i mean uh i've yeah. known you for some years now obviously philadelphia fight scene you know what i mean um i've been fortunate and blessed to be part of this whole circuit over here and i watched you come up you know from a distance i even held mitts for you before you know what i mean it was a lot of fun you know what I mean? So talk to the people. How did it all start with you? How did the Brian Jennings thing start? What made you get into boxing and, and, and where did it start? Well, I mean, it started when I was uh, 24 years old, 2009. Uh, you know, it was just in the hood, you know, and I just was just was a very talented person. And, you know, I never really took advantage of, of, of a particular sport or a particular craft. And, you know, we always got that, you know, athletic ability as, yeah, as young black males. And so, and so therefore, you know, I just, I just tried it out. And the moment I tried it out, it took off. And, you know, when it took off, you know, I started, I started achieving a lot of, a lot of things like, like very early on. And I just couldn't look back because I was dead by then. Right, right. Now, in the boxing? Say that again? Did you play any other sports before you got into boxing? Like, were you like, you know, a football player, basketball player, anything like that? Well, I mean, we all play all sports. So nothing, nothing, nothing uh, professionally, you know, it was just like high school sports and stuff like that. So it wasn't nothing really like, you know, but I did play football in high school. Yeah, I got him. Right. Now, how about your amateur background? What kind of amateur background did you have? Uh, So I had 17 fights. So. So basically, my first my first amateur fight was 31 days after I started boxing. You know, uh, 
then and then by you know by the by the fourth or fifth month, you know, I was in the Golden Glove Finals in, in Salt Lake City, you know, fighting at a stage where, you know, a lot of the, you know, low class amateur guys or even even up and coming amateur guys who man, they, they, they never really got a chance to do, you know. And you know, because most most guys don't make it past the state or the regionals and things like that. And so I did that within four or five months. And you know, that's how I knew that. That's how we knew um, that you know that it was this was something that I was going to be. I was I was going to be. A part. How did how did y'all find that out, man? You know, what I mean, how did you guys find that out? That you know, you and your team, you know, your trainer, whatever. At the time when you first started, you literally only been in the gym for. 31 days and on top of that you're starting late at 24 years old how did that all start that they were like yo this kid's ready to go let him go like did you just go into the gym and start throwing hands day one like where did they come up with this idea that you would be even ready for an amateur fight in one month well well i mean i was i i came up under fred jenkins you know uh you know fred is not only a great trainer uh fred is also a risk taker and I was the type of person, and me, that wasn't my first day with Fred. You know, uh, that was just me interacting with him and actually, actual, in actual boxing. But, you know, Fred knew me personally from, you know, being around and stuff like that. So he knew, he knew the collar ball, all the guys that hung around the rec center and things like that. And so, you know, Fred was a risk taker. And I showed him, you know, what, what I showed him, you know, unintentionally, because I didn't know what it was, you know, but what he saw in me was something that could, could definitely you know, take the risk. And he was right. He was absolutely right. He was right. Right, 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 right. All right, well, you're what? You're 6'3", right? You're 6'3"? Yeah, I'm 6'3". And you got an 84 inch reach. So that's a that's a little bit, that's like, you're like an anomaly in that sense, right? Because uh, Anthony Joshua got an 82 inch reach, Wilder got an 83 inch reach, and Tyson Fury got an 85 inch reach, and these guys are way taller than you. So how yeah. has that, like how has that affected you in your boxing? Do you think guys underestimate your height, and then when they get in there, your reach is a lot longer? Like what, like you know, what I mean, what do you see there? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of guys, especially the non-defensive guys, you know, the guys who who doesn't have as great as defense, and they just think like, damn, how the hell is he? How the hell is he hitting me? Like you know, how the hell is his face? His hands is like like right in my face, you know. So so it's just uh, it, it, it's What's definitely so a plus. You know, uh, but it's something that, you know, I took away from it by, you know, more so falling more in love with the inside game. Like, it's just, you know, the dumb stuff that, you know, fighters do, you know. <laughs> and it's like, damn, boy, you got the long, one of the longest, arms, longest set of arms in the game, and, you know, you want to fight inside. Well, you know, it is what it is, but it's definitely good when I use it. Right, right. <clears throat> All right, so, you know, talking about that, you know, you, had, you fought Oscar Rivas. Um, saw the fight. It was a very competitive fight. You came out there boxing. It looked like that was the game plan for you. You was moving around. You was using your jab. You was doing some really good things in the fight. It was a close fight up until round 12, right? We know what happened in round 12. Reviewing that fight, looking back at that fight, what did you feel about your performance and what did you take away from that particular fight? Well, I just, I just watched the fight. Uh, they had like a set of highlights on YouTube. I just watched the highlights because I probably never really watched the fight. I probably watched it one time, and every time we get to the 12th round, I'm like, nope, <laughs> I ain't watching this shit. So, uh, but I knew what I did. I knew what I did the week of the fight. And so I came in there like, fuck, fuck. you know, like, damn, like I knew I, I knew I fucked up. But, you know, for me to get to round 12, under, 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 the, under the circumstances I was in, because, you know, more so it's like, it was more so mental, so it's not only something physical that you feel. It's more mental too. That's actually, you know, putting a little more emphasis on, on your physical feel. You know, and it's just like fuck. So it was just something that I had to weather the storm with. But that's the reason why I was more so comfortable to be like, yo, we get this rematch. Oh. Right. But I ain't really, I didn't really push for a rematch before because, you know, it was just like fuck it. You know, it was something that I was dealing with, and you know, it was something that. It was something I felt as though I was like, look, like, bro, like, 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 this, this on you, this your fault. And, you know, you know, it was what it was. And, I mean, I got over it. But, you know, when it, when opportunity presented itself once more, you know, I just was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll take that. And they think I'm, and they probably, and they probably think I'm sweet, which, 
he probably don't really think so. And there's so many things that's 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 like wrong with him. And even when uh even when Dylan White, you know, fought him, I, I actually, you know, we was we was back and forth, you know, talking and stuff like that. Um and, you know, I was just telling him, I said, yo, watch out for this dude, because he would lull you to sleep. You know, he's kind of like a boring fighter. You know, he chills, and then, you know, he fights when he want to fight, and then, you know, he'll, be, he'll relax, and then you'll think he don't want to fight no more, and the next thing you know, boom, you know. And I guess that's what the kaboom is for. That's a good yeah. thing. <laughs> that's a good thing for him right there, you know. But, uh, but yeah, you know, just, you know, for me, for me, just to be more, a lot more, a lot smart. I mean, throughout the fight, I was I was defensive. I probably could have been a little more offensive, but at the same time, sometimes you just want to wait until somebody want to throw more punches. Cause, you know, you catch them a lot more when they, you know, when they're a little more elusive, especially when you're a counter puncher. You know, uh, and he's not that, and he's not that fast. And so as I'm thinking, like, yo, like I can, I tell you, it's up. You get the you get the move in them hands. You know, you know, I'm getting you know very very defensive and come off of it. But you know, he didn't really do that. And so it was a little hesitant that he did, you know, press the issue, uh, you know, in other aspects. But, you know, it was it was good and it was close, you know, until, you know, until that 12th round. Right. All right. Well, you was going to rematch him for the Bridgeway title, right? Can you right. explain to me? Can you explain to me what the Bridgeway title is? This is something new to me, man. This is something that I'm just hearing about not too long ago. I know, you know, like, okay, what, what's the Bridgeway title? Yeah, so the bridge weight title is a uh, form of the heavyweight title, uh, WBC, and the maximum weight is 200. Minimum weight, I mean, maximum weight is 224. Minimum weight is 200. So uh, it's still within the heavyweight division. It's just, it's, it's almost like a subdivision for the smaller guys. Now, mind you, I've already been in there and tussled and rolled around with, with, with the bigger guys, whether they was on juice or... Or, or straight clean and so but but i still i still fell up fell in line along you know along the lines of the weight the weight uh maximum and you know, a lot of times i come in 225 so i'm just thinking like okay 224 we can do that and i just figured it's a lot of guys that are 205 that's too small to be heavyweight and too big to be cruiserweight that could actually that could have actually filled filled this uh you know filled this division up yeah, I mean, you know, you already know I, I'm like best friends and work with Eddie Chambers. I wish this would have been around for him. You know what I'm saying? When he was on, when he was active, you know what I mean? Yeah, he would have been perfect. And shit, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie still, Eddie still is probably, well, I mean, I, I don't know how he feel, but, you know, based off of what I know about him, you know, he could, Eddie still could probably come in and fuck something up in the game, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. All right, so. Talk to me, man. Let's talk about what we talk, you know, what this whole thing's about, man. So we got the whole vaccine situation. People say you're anti-vaccinate, anti-vaccine, whatever you want to call that. You know what I mean? You're basically not vaccinated. You don't want to get vaccinated. Talk to me about the situation. What happened and why did you decide to not take this fight? Uh, Well, I decided not to take it when they said that my only option was to get vaccinated or a 14, 14 day quarantine. And I just, I'm just thinking like, I'm not getting vaccinated and a 14 day quarantine. I'm like, okay, give me the details of that 14 day quarantine. And so the quarantine and details was pretty much, you know, I'm in a room by myself, um, in a room period. In a, in a hotel room for 14 days, you know, no trainer. My trainer's not vaccinated either. You know, um, and, you now, know. Why don't you want to get vaccinated? For the people who might say, yo, why don't he just go ahead and get vaccinated? Like, you know, this is, your, you know, like, what's your reaction to that question? I mean, I'm in shape. <laughs> I'm good. I have no, I have no issues. I, I personally don't need it. And, you know, why Why don't I want to get it is the same reason why somebody don't want to eat a salad. Same reason why somebody don't want to be vegan. Same reason why somebody don't want to be uh, a Christian or Muslim. You know, same reasons why, like, people make the decisions and choices in their life that they want to make. You know, this is not something, you know, I mean, I wonder why people would want to smoke crack. Like, there's new crackheads. There's new heroin users. You know, there's new drunks. And they all, they all know the outcomes. 
you know, and it's just like that's the choice that they made. And so the choice that I'm making is is to not get vaccinated. You know, you take your chances. And so and so sometimes they have things that's placed in front of us to the point where it was like, okay, you get ultimatum. Okay, you either do this, and if you don't do this, then you know you're more subject to that. And some people are like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead with I'm I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and wait my chances out. You know, I'm a I'm I'm a hold out. I'm you know, and that's that's pretty much what I'm doing. But 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 the fact that they say, you know, to, to you know to force it on. So you're not anti-vaccine. You're just you, you're just uh, exercising your right to not get vaccinated, or uh, are you an anti-vaxer? That's a that's another that's another section of 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 the answer. You know, like you know, uh, I I would I would think that the most important part is is my choice. Because there's so many other windows and doors that can be opened up by just saying, oh, "Okay, now you're you're, you're now you're this anti vaxxer I'm not for the vaccines, so yeah, I would be considered an anti vaxxer But me explaining why I'm an anti vaxxer oh man, you know that'd be a uh, that'd be a hell of a long answer. You know that'd be a lot of that'd be a lot of perspective. But at the end of the day, it's just my perspective. It's just one, and I'm quite sure that everybody knows and understands that you know. The basis and the information, you know, that we've been that we've been assessing over the over the months about vaccines and over the years for me, and so I'm the same dude that you know, you go you go and on old posts way before COVID even hit, you know, vaccines with the you know uh, being tied to the autism children with autism and things like that, and you know I, I I've been on that you know and shit Dr. Umar been on that. You know, like we've been on that, and then they came out with this, and so it was all. It was almost like a, it was almost like a, uh, like a pre-education series that I was going through. You know, with becoming conscious and understanding and learning the history of all these different things, not just vaccines. Learning the history of you know how we're treated and how we want to be treated, how we should be treated, and how we treat ourselves, and all these different things of you know just 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 creating a character. You know, as a as a melanated man in this society, you know, where where we're, we're not favored, and so it was like pre-education, and then boom, they they told they told us it was gonna hit, they told us it was gonna hit, and so when it came to hit, I'm prepared. I'm on, my mind is already equipped with things that you know that are actually against that because I'm not only just against it because somebody else said they don't like it, I'm against it because of the information that I know, and the information that I've been taught. You know, and, and the information that I've been taught are facts, you know, and they've been proven. And time and time again, they've been proven. And so I understand what side of the field I'm on. I understand understand what team I'm playing for. And I'm not siding with the other team, period, point blank, no matter what. I don't care. All right. So so we got that, you know, so we got the situation. You're, you're not getting vaccinated. You made a decision. Your trainer's not vaccinated, so he can't come with you inside of your bubble. So basically, you you can't leave the bubble for fourteen days. You can't go outside, get sun, nothing. That's how that works. Yeah, that's how. That's how. Listen, it wasn't explained to me any different, to the point where I could actually have a lot more movement or a little more movement. Uh, you know, but yeah, that's that's just what it was. And this is not this is not a promoter's mandate. This is particularly the government's mandate, and so or the government's rule or enforcement. So basically now where is this being held? This is this is not in the United States, right? This is in Canada? Yeah, Montreal, Canada. Now is any of these rules and restrictions happening in the United States that you know of right now? This is just Canada as of right now. No, nah, uh I don't I don't know I don't know of any of you know any United States, you know, states that are you know that are doing these type of things. I know I know California and uh what's the other city? Uh New York is getting pretty strict. But I'm I'm not sure of the actual thing. I'm I mean I'm not I'm not keeping up with it. I'm keep I'm I mean I can keep up with wherever I'm gonna be at, but I'm not I'm not necessarily keeping up with you know with with with, with, with everything because it's too much and they change things so much so many times. That's the reason why when they even when they had it in the contract, oh you will I will follow the Quebec uh, health health public requirements public health requirements, and I'm thinking like okay at at the particular time the requirements were something different. And so if you, if, 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 if three weeks had passed after I signed the contract or agreed to a contract, then, you know, I'm signing up under the original requirements. You can't keep placing all these new requirements within the contract. That's, 
that's that's blowing everything. Like, so they added they added new requirements to the contract. So you're you when you read the original contract to the contract is this to the requirements and the requirements was something that I had no information on. You get what I'm saying? So the requirements you didn't know what the requirements were. Yeah, you didn't really know what the requirements were, but you know, but you knew, but I knew that you know I you know I knew that or I had a, or I was aware that you know there weren't you know the vaccine the vaccination you know restriction weren't as strict. And so basically you probably could have went in and you know under under other conditions and things like that. But now it's just like it's just like damn these things change like three times it changed every day. It's probably changed now. It's changed now. You get me? So it's changed now. So every every day is something different. And you can't keep up with that and you can't allow that to actually inter interfere with a combat sport. Now all of this shit that we fucking do when somebody fucking died in the ring the, the other week, that was the reason why my fight was canceled. Someone died. So now you want me to now you want me to get a shot at my arm and start swinging the same arm. You know, this just a jab hand. You know what they what they what they wanted with the left to put it in the left. Yeah, that's just a jab hand. And was is Oscar Rivas vaccinated by the best of your knowledge? I mean, to the best of my knowledge, yes, he is vaccinated. Everybody vaccinated. And then when you talk to somebody from from certain places, they are very they are very fearful of their government. And I'm just be like, yo, like you can't even nah. Like I'm from I'm from where I'm from, and we found loopholes and we found ways around. We found other ways to think outside of uh you know a way to be forced to be taught, you know to to you know to think. I'm saying you know, and it's like. It's like I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking like they want us to think. I'm thinking with my own mind, and I'm not the only person that do that. Like you know, like we all have a brain. Like we allowed to to think the way we want to think. And I'm not, I'm not follow. I'm just not following a lot of the things. And you know, that could actually you know go further to a lot of, a lot of, a lot more explanation. But we'll be here all night. So now, so now you, so you turn the fight down, right? Now, is there an issue now with this contract? Is there, is there going to be some sort of lawsuits being filed on your behalf, on their behalf towards you for this, you know, breach of contract, I guess you should say? Or like, how is this, what's going on behind the scenes at, with this situation right now? I'm sure they're upset. I know you're upset. So what's the situation? Uh, they created it. They can destroy it. It's not, it's not. So, so I'm. Um, the, the, I'm fighting with who created it. So if they created it, they can destroy it. Now there's no there's no uh there, there, there there's no facts about anyone breaking, you know, breaching the contract. But they created it and they say, all right, well, if they in the wrong, they just destroy it. That's it. And now that shit ain't gonna take off. I feel sad for it. I feel sorry for it. It's not gonna take off. And that boy is never gonna be a star. Cause don't nobody know him, don't nobody give a fuck about him. But the people that's there, and that's not even, it's, it's not. Like, like you know, boxing, you got to feel. You got to feel the person. You got to, boxing has had to be felt. The same reason, the difference between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. Mike Tyson expressed his personality throughout, throughout his whole career. Evander didn't do, it, do that as much. And so even at the end, and people love Mike Tyson, and people, people love Evander, don't get me wrong, but people love Mike Tyson because of his personality. That dude, Oscar Rivas, don't got no personality. Nobody knows him, you know? And, okay, maybe there's a lot of people that don't know me, but there's a lot of people that do. And I'm standing up for a lot of other That's the thing about me. I'm not just a boxer. I'm all these other things. And so, you know, I just don't think he, he has it. You know, he's a fucking, I mean, no offense to him, though. You know what? I apologize. <laughs> I apologize to him for that. No offense to him, but it's just, he's just stuck in a situation in where though I think that they just want him to be a champ. You know, and just and just put a stamp on his career and just let him go because you know he can't see. You know, he, he can only get he can only get licensed in Canada. That's the reason why the fight the first time was in Turnerstone Casino. And anything that's in Turnerstone Casino with me, I had bad luck there. Not just bad luck with the outcomes of certain fights, I had bad luck in other ways that nobody don't know nobody even really know. So basically he can't see. He cannot see. That's the reason why he can't fight in America because they won't pass. He can't see. Something no, so he's, not, he's not even a. He's not even a. He can't even be marketed worldwide due to due to his situation. Because he won't. He won't be able. He won't be able to to express and maneuver and you know and, and, and do all of the particular traveling and fighting and others. Uh, it won't. It won't happen. It won't happen. So I think. I think they're just trying to put the stamp on him. You know, do this and then you know take the ride. You already. We already talking about. We already talking about. 
something or someone that's not as big anyway. Now you're trying to recreate a star off of nothing. It ain't going to happen. It's no marketability there. And I told them that, you know, you're dealing with YouTube stars, you're dealing with the celebrities getting in the boxing ring, MMA getting in the boxing ring. You know, um, Canelo's hot. You know, the 130 division is hot. Um, you know, the heavy uh, three, four heavyweights are hot. You know, and it's just like, yo, you you walking in there unequipped, and you trying to you trying to spark you trying to spark a fire, but you ain't got gas or spark. You know, and it's just like it ain't it's just not gonna happen, not with that. You know, because they don't they don't have the power behind a lot of things, and maybe I don't either, but it's in my head. And I'm the one that, that can articulate it. And I think that, you know, I could be the one that, you know, that could actually push it a little more. You know, I got I, I got a whole lot of connection. And I, a lot of people know me. And I'm respected by just about all of the fucking boxers that have ever that have ever seen me or, or that have ever, you know, contacted me or any type of way. You know, I give respect. To you know, and it's just not the same with that person. He gets no help. How was how how did everybody take it when you made the decision to pull out? Like when you just pause, when you decided when you decided not to <laughs> when you decided not to yeah. when you decided not to take the fight, I should say. Yeah. How how did your team, how did the people in boxing that you know that were part of that whole circle, how did they react? Did they say, Man, just take the damn vaccine, Brian, what are you doing? Or were they like, stick to your guns? Yeah. You know, which one was it? It was a couple of people that were saying, well, "Won't you just take it?" Some people were silent, you know. Some people were like, "No, I'm with you, B. I ain't, I ain't with that," you know. And it basically, and it, to me, honestly, I don't even think it was about the it was about the vaccine because basically they waving the fucking they waving something in front of you. It's like Chris taking the bait. The fuck I need the vaccine for? I've been I'm the same person that 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 that, that, that stopped eating meat in 2013. I fought I fought I fought Vladimir Klitschko five six years after starting boxing. Full vegan. Health conscious. You can go on. You can go on Netflix, and you can look up a documentary that I'm heavily featured in called The Game Changers. You know, I'm speaking on health, speaking against cancer, and I'm, I'm from the hood. I mean, you see this? Like I'm from the hood. Like you get me? And so speaking against cancer, we got we got cancer, we got AIDS, we got uh, heart disease, we got diabetes, we got crackheads, we got weed heads, we got we got we got heroin addicts, we got we got poor people, poor minded. These, these are all these things that I'm going to speak against, you know, because I want to be, I want to be a healthy 100% great being like, you know, and it's just this, this, I feel as though that's part of my purpose. And, and Hey, it's coming into fruition to, to the point where, you know, I, I might as well just keep expressing myself, you know, people that now you've been, get it, then fuck them. Now you've been freely expressing yourself on social media for some time now, literally since for basically as long as you've had your social media platform. And I know you've gotten, First 2011. You, I know you've gotten, I know you've gotten some hate, and I know you've gotten a lot of love. How has the people reacted to this situation? Because on my post, I posted it like two, three days ago, and they're still fighting on that post <laughs> right now. You got people arguing with you. Everybody's an expert now. You know what I'm saying? You got all these experts popping out. Everybody's a, a doctor now. So, what what are you getting on your? You know, what are, what kind of energy are you getting on your social media? Uh, I'm I'm getting I'm getting mixed I'm getting mixed uh I'm getting mixed reactions but it's like a it's like a uh uh 85 15 percent you know um ratio 85 being positive you know and you always get the stragglers and I wouldn't even say 15 percent it might be it might be 90 90 10 you know um because you know you get all you get the people that's that's actually not even thinking for themselves that's probably drinking a drinking a fucking Pepsi right now. You know that smoke of the Newport, you know that's 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 sitting on the couch with a box of pizza, you know. Um, I mean, not to say you know you can't sit on the couch with a box of pizza, but you know what I mean. But you know, just people that are actually unhealthy, and you know the people that actually don't that 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 don't show the effort and value in their health, you know, they're they're actually now trying to tell somebody about, you know, about their personal health, and you know, I I, I actually stop, or actually slow down a bit on convincing other people not to take it i just express why i shouldn't take it and if you follow me or if you understand you know if you want if you want if you see me to be a great example then you know that that you should follow you know because they're using the celebrities to fucking do it they're using celebrities to tell people to take it so how come i can't express it through myself and show you why not to take it 
Now, are you afraid? Are you afraid that you could potentially get blackballed from any big situations? due to what you decided to do to stand up for your rights, to stand up for your own personal beliefs? Do you feel like now you might not get another opportunity? People might say, hey, wash our hands with them. Because right now, this is such a funny subject and a touchy subject. It almost seems like, you know, you go against the grain and now you canceled. You see what I'm saying? Whether it's in front of your face or or behind the scenes. So does that concern you in any way? Uh, don't. It don't because you can't you can't cancel you can can't i, I don't i don't i never i don't want to be i'm not gonna say i never i don't want to be a part of the of, of they shit like you know and of course like i'm from the hood so what i said we find loopholes you try to stop me in one way i'm gonna find another way and so i'm not i'm not looking to be accepted by by a society or or anything that's the reason why i don't give a fuck i'm not really i'm not really like feeding into what the majority of the society is, because if I wanted to fit in and be like everybody else, then I might as well just fall in line. You know, how about, but I mean more so. I mean more so on a business <laughs> aspect as a as a professional prize fighter. I will find the loopholes and pride in my ass. Like I came in this game to hustle, and I did just that. You still got people that's been in it for years longer than me, and they never even seen the TV. I saw TV, or TV saw me. 15, 16 times, or whatever, however many it was. Numerous amounts of fights, you know, main events, you know, uh, worldwide exposure. You know, it's, I mean, I'm cool. I'm good where I'm at right now. You know, because especially that you can't trade, you can't, nah, I'm not trading on it. I'm not, that's called selling your soul. I mean, when you want more, you, you're willing to give up more. No, I'm not, no, I'm not doing that. It's, it's only but so much I'll give up. I'll give up whatever, whatever particular possessions or whatever particular things that I can give up, but I won't give up me. That's it. I'm not giving, I'm not giving me up I'm, and I'm not giving up on me either. Right. So what now? What now? Where do, where do we go from here? Where, where, you know, what's the conclusion of all this craziness that's going on? I mean, I got a life outside of it. <laughs> I got a life, I got a life outside of it. And you know, life is to be lived. You know, um, I'm very blessed, you know, and I see people who walk around, you know, with smiles on their face that have nothing. And so when I see them, and I say, damn, if they can smile, I know I can smile. I can, I can laugh and crack up. And even if I lose some things, you know, I walk with them and smile right along with them. You know, well, you know? I, mean, I mean, but I mean also, like, obviously, I know you're going to be good in life regardless because that's the kind of man you are. But I mean more so you were in fight shape, ready to fight, literally. I and mean, now, you're not, now you're not fighting. So, like, is there any opportunities you think that you can get into before the year is up? Do you think that there's somebody else you could fight? Like, you know, what are you going to do with all this hard work that you've been putting in these last few months? The fight already got postponed. The hard work for me is the lifestyle. And the lifestyle comes easy. It's come, it comes natural. So I want my motherfucking money. That's what the fuck I want. I want, I want my money that I lost out on, that I missed out on, you know? Oh, so they got to, you want them to pay you basically for this situation regardless. I mean, here's the thing, right? The fight was supposed to have been in June. So I was training, started training like April, April, May for June, for the June fight. The June fight got, got postponed to September. Started training, started doing all that for September. September fight got postponed to October. Started training, started doing all that, and now this. And I'm just thinking like, like at, at, what, at what point should not be compensated for, for two, you know, you know, for somebody backing out? And then the one, the one reason was, you know, was that, you know, the, the, the young lady lost her life, you know, um, prayers go out to her own family you know but it's just like what did that really have to do with upcoming shows that you know people worked hard for and i i didn't really think that i had a value uh uh you know you know a real great argument on that because that was a very sensitive topic so i chose not to speak on it and you know i think i made the right decision on choosing not to speak on it because it's sensitive so my life was you know taken but at the end of the day it's just like it's like damn that messed up everything for that and and we definitely could wish that you know if we could reverse you know we could reverse time then we'll bring her back but you know um yeah it was it was just all messed up so i decided not to speak on it because i just think that i wasn't in a place to speak on it because that was that that was the excuse that maybe maybe them using that as an excuse was the for some fucked up shit you know and that would have been some fucked up shit but i'm not in control of that i don't really know why but you know whatever it was like okay cool picked up the pieces 
and and you know within a week later you know got back training spending money airbnb hotels flights food and all these other things and i couldn't be comp- i couldn't be compensated for nothing for none of that and lost time wasted time but wasted money was was was, was the worst damn yeah hopefully they handle that my man bill williams said good for you by your immune system will keep you healthy Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Bill Bird. Bill Bird said, "Hold out, true crusader, true patriot." Sir, appreciate it. Anti-vaxxer equals critical thinker. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't like people that think. So they want to program. Respect to Mr. Jennings. No autism in Amish communities. Now, what? The, what is that to say? Yeah, why is that? Yeah, yeah, we know that. They, they, all, uh, they, they're, they're against vaccines and stuff too. Right. Right. That's true. Jorge said everybody has a medical degree. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. It's it, it's crazy, man. Hopefully they do compensate you for this, man. You dealing you dealing with a you're de- you're I, you might be the first fighter I know dealing with this situation, especially at this magnitude. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I I, I haven't heard of anyone else. Yeah, I haven't heard of anyone else. You know, like uh, I, I'm of course we know people that that failed COVID tests, but. Not like this whole vaccine push. And it's just like, yo, you asking me? Like anybody that know me, they know better than to to to, you know, they know better than to think that I'm gonna do it. Like I've been this type of person my whole. You don't, life. Even, you don't even eat meat. Pause. You know what I mean? So yeah. So let alone, let alone do the vaccine. Like. <laughs> yeah. Let me, ask you, let me ask you a quick question about that, man. You you obviously been a. How long have you been a vegan? Uh, 2015 full vegan, uh, and 2013 vegetarian. How, how do you think it has affected your boxing as far as punching power goes? You got guys who believe that if you don't eat meat protein, I should say, you're not gonna hit as hard or or whatever. Have you noticed any differences? Have you noticed more strength? Have you noticed more speed? Like, what do you what do you feel that makes you say, "Nah, I'm staying vegan"? Besides the health part, I'm talking about more of a performance I'm- part. I mean, okay, on the performance part, uh, I mean, it's just the fact that you fight in time already. And so when you fight in time and you find something that can battle, that, that, that can slow down time just a little bit, you know, because cause when people go out and drink and smoke, you know, that speeds up time. You get old fast. So you find other ways to slow down time in a sense. And so I, I found the fountain of youth. You know, and that's basically to, you know, watch what you eat, take care of yourself. And boxers, us as boxers, even if we don't drink, we look good after after boxing. You know, we don't drink, we don't get high. We look good in boxing. You know, it's just like, you know, we look real, you know, we look real well put together. You know, we took care of ourselves. Any any athlete that took care of himself, he looks good afterwards. Now time and and and, and whatever sports you're in and the activity and speed the power all of that shit could vary because you can have somebody that eat meat and as old as old that he gets the better he gets it's just it could just be genetics and so i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not uh i'm not i'm not i don't i'm not a superman but i found something that gave me some superpowers and i've maintained and held and then i'm then you know you're growing more man strength you know i'm 37 years old growing more man strength you know and i'm in there with Shit with uh with with Jared Anderson. I always always big up my big up my youngin because uh I always tell him say listen yo like like he's twenty one years old and 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 I'll be wishing I was twenty one again. Right. I just be like all right. So as difficult as it could as it could get, basically going off of top top tier, you know, back and forth. It's just like yeah no I'm I'm good because. I'm fucking 16 years older than this motherfucker. You mean like, and so you know, I'm like, oh no, yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm straight. Because like I said in the beginning, see, if some people don't got that good, good of a defense. You know what I mean? So 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 when I go, when I train with someone that's that's great, such as him, and then I go in there with somebody else, it's like night and day. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, man. Well, listen, by man. I wish you the best of luck in this situation, man. This situation is crazy. I know the boxing world's, you know, they're behind you, Pauls. You know what I'm saying? They definitely rocking with you. And, you know, um, I just hope that uh, everything works out for you, man. I mean, this is 
You know, and I commend you for standing up for your personal beliefs. You know what I mean? I think that if everybody did that, you know what I mean? Things things wouldn't be so easy to implement on us. Yeah, but you know what's crazy? A lot of people are saying that, and I definitely respect it. I definitely respect it. But I just get to looking and say, well, what'd you expect? You know, like, <laughs> and, and not just to say them people, but in general, you know, and it's just like, how come we always got to get, got to be congratulated? Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I respect it. And they, they, they know what they talking about and they right. But I'm just saying in a sense to, you know, we always got to be congratulated for being, for being who the hell we say we really were. Like, you know what I, mean? I mean, I said I was, but you thought I was bullshitting. So when I prove it to you, you know, then you get that. But, you know, we def I definitely still need it. You know, definitely still tell me, you know, that you're proud of me and things like that. Well, you'll be, you be surprised how many people, you know, feel like you feel. But when that money gets put on the table, things change. Yeah, but yeah, but what I want, right? I'm like, 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 I'm grateful for that positive, right? But I want other motherfuckers to be called out on, on when they, when they don't stand up. I mean, that's what it is when they, when they don't stand up. You know I mean, because some people that don't stand up, they still blend in. No, you need to be, you need to be, go to, go over there. Like, you need to be over there. Like, you, you can't blend in with us. You know what I mean? So, you, we all, over here is people that stood up. And over there, you know, people that, you know, people that didn't stand up, but they come scooting and then they, they quiet. I'm like, no, no, get him out of here. He got a red, he got a, he got a red dot on him. Get out of here. Get him out of here. So, let me ask you a question real quick. I wanted to ask you this earlier and I forgot. What do you suggest they do? Since you're since you didn't like the whole situation based off of the vaccine and the quarantine, which to me I, I totally understand. I would hate to be in a fucking bubble for 14 days before a major fight. That's horrible. But what do you suggest they do and 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 you know to make it easier for unvaccinated fighters? Make the fight. I mean, because this is business, and I know people are pussies now when they're scared of the fucking government. But make the fight where the fight could actually happen. Make the make all fights where the fights could actually happen. You know, even if they even if they seclude us to 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 they say, okay, yeah, this one city is the only city that y'all be able to okay, guess who fight in that city? Every fucking body. That city go that city gonna be the new Mecca of boxing. Make the fight where you can fight. Don't make the fight in you know, that's that's in a place where it's gonna be difficult. You know, it's oh, we're gonna need somebody with this, we're gonna need somebody with that. It's just like, it's like yo, like stop, like so my, my man said, respect you, Chan. The problem with the world is nobody wants to respect people's own personal choice unless it certain suits their narrative. Exactly. exactly. Sounds all right. My man Mark said Florida will host the fight. <laughs> right, yeah. Tell me how to fight in Florida. Like I, I <laughs> but, I, but Oscar Rivas can't he can't leave Canada. So you're gonna you're gonna need a different opponent. You might as well just move on from that situation. I mean, yeah, I would, I would move on from the situation and let him, and let him win, let him win the bridge of weight thing. I don't, I don't care. He's just gonna be, nobody gonna be in the stands. And then, this is one of the things I told him. I said we could have the fight in another place and have it closed circuit like they were doing during the hard COVID times. No, no crowd, no nothing, just me and you. Like, 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 you know, when, you know, when they had the no crowd. I said, damn, why can't we do that? Why can't we do that? But. They don't want that. They want something else, and they want they, they want him to feel good about himself. They must have promised him something, and this is this is going to be the only way that you know they give him what what whatever whatever they promised him. And it's cool. I'm not I'm not in it for no fucking belt. I'm in it for progress. You know, I can respect the belt because the belt holds more progress. You know, and more you know it holds power. And so I believe. You like I, so you are so you're you're. You obviously like the bridge of weight because you got people who are like, man, man, forget that bridge of weight. You're you like it. You like the fact that they got a title on that. No, I like it because I like the idea because I can understand how many fighters from 205 to 220 that's out there. You know, you got cats that's walking down the street. Yeah, I used to box, but you mean I was cruiserweight till I fought some six nine guy. You know what I mean? It was like, damn, I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't lose weight. But it's it's a the, the the cruiserweight division, like Lawrence Acoli, right? Say for instance, if this get if, if this if this thing get get booming, Lawrence Acoli, right? He you know he he a, he a cruiserweight champion, boom. Lawrence Lawrence just you know gain five pounds, you know, come because you know cruiserweights hold their power and they can they can be able to take the punch. You know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall off. You sick? You sick? You sick? Just prove that. I mean, yeah, exactly. 
And so, and so basically, like somebody like Lawrence could, could be, you know, he could be like, all right, cool. My next step up, I'm going to test it out. You could test it out on the Bridgeway side. And then, you know, if you come from, if you're a champ, you come from, if you're a champ moving up in the weight class, you automatically get pushed to like the top five or something like that, top three or whatever. And so you could be in, you could be in title, title contention right then and there. And so if, some, if somebody finds it good to be able to fight within that, and get used to the heavier punches and all that stuff like that, they probably don't never go back down to Cruiserweight. So what you call it? Uh, Bridgeweight can might eliminate Cruiserweight because Cruiserweight is one of the most boringest, not boringest to me, but one of the most. They just, what if they just named it heavyweight and super heavyweight like they do in the amateurs? I mean. They make all Cruiserweights heavyweights and make all super heavyweights guys like Tyson Fury and them guys. I mean, super heavyweights, Tyson Fury and all them type of guys. And then you got the heavyweights, which will be guys like you, Usyk, Eddie Chambers, guys like that. Yeah, but, yeah, but I, 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 nah, you, you can't do that for a guy with heart. Yeah, because a guy such as myself, I don't give a fuck what it is. I still want to fight the Are you looking at the winner of this fight coming up, the, 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 the Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder? Do you want that? Do you want the winner of that fight? I got to get in position for that. I don't think. Well, man, no, we talking hypothetically right now. Like, you see that situation? You like, yeah, I want that fight. It's, it's, it, hell yeah, it's progress. Yeah, I would definitely want to fight Tyson Fury, and I would, I would definitely want to fight Wilder too. You know, if he wins, you know, uh, I would think, I would think. They were talking about you and Wilder at one point, weren't they? For years, for years. I mean, for years. Yeah, yeah. That's a good fight for you, right there, man. I like that fight for I, you. I, I, I would rather fight. I would rather fight Fury than Wilder, though. Really? What? What makes you say that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why they got that motherfucking hammer? <laughs> uh, he got to land it, though. He got to land it, though. Yeah, you no, know, he got to land it, but I would rather fight Fury. I would rather fight Fury than Wilder. <laughs> I, want Wilder I want Wilder to really redeem himself. Because at the end of the day, I'm, 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 team, I'm team Wilder. And I don't, I don't even be against nobody, but at the end of the day, I'd be like, no. Like, now, Malik Scott is working with Wilder. And I know Malik Scott and you are close, right? You guys obviously both came from Fred Jenkins. Right. Uh what's your thoughts about this? Like, like, do you I mean, feel like do you feel like Malik is adding on to Wilder right now? Do you think that he's really doing like you think that he can in one camp change that stuff? Hell yeah, hell yeah. I mean, for many things, you know, aside from where he's from, you know, uh he's 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 that type of he's that type of person, you know. But Let's just let's just say from where he's from, we we have that type of pedigree. He's a great teacher, you know. He's a fucking great teacher. He's a great coach already. He's a, he's a former fighter. Like he's a student of the game for real. He's been a student. He's been a technician. The dude, the dude has been boxing. Man, he knows what he knows what he's doing, you know. And his career towards the end, or when he got to certain things, might not have went as well as he wanted to be. But at the end of the day. When he put on the clinic, that motherfucker put on the clinic, you know. And he, I mean, he probably was a little past his time, you know, because he he had he had a, he he was in it, he was around for a lot of time. He said he took off. He he gained a lot of weight at one time. He was he was pretty much done, and then he got back in shape and stuff like that. So 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 in the later times when people really saw him, you know, lose and do all that, it's just like all right, well, that ain't the same Malik though, you know, but. He still would put on a fucking clinic. Like when he beat Glasscoff and he and he took the fight from him, like wow. Like wow. But you know, it's uh, you know, he's very he's very talented and he's a teacher. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I I thought we was gonna have enough uh battery for this drink, but that drink just said 10, 10, 10 uh ten percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah, yeah, for sure. But listen, man, you you know, I wanna say thank you for taking time. I know you out there, you know, willing and dealing, you still made time to get on here, but uh you know, we're going to wish you the best of luck, man. And I need everybody to share this, man. You know, we got to get the word out there, man. We can't, we can't, you know, have these kind of situations, man. You know what I mean? Everybody should be entitled to their own decisions. You know, at the end of the day, whether you want to get vaccinated, not get vaccinated, I don't believe that it should be forced on anybody. At all. At you all. Know? So, yo, we wish you, man. We rooting for you, my brother. And thank you for making time. All right, man. Appreciate it. You already know. All right. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we have that dude. We have B.Y. Jennings just pulled up. Man, I want to say thank you to you guys, man, for pulling up too, man, by the way. Um, 
very, very interesting situation. You know what I mean? Very, very unfortunate situation, man. You got a guy right now who, you know, dedicated his whole life to the craft. And literally in one year, man, everything's changing for a lot of people, man. A lot of people who've been putting their whole lives into a career, whether that's nurses, now you got boxers, and now everything's just changing, like, you know, based on something that's out of our control. And I understand 100% the people who are afraid, and I understand people who are vaccinated, who want to do the right thing for themselves. They feel that they should get vaccinated. If you get vaccinated and all that, that's on you, you know what I mean? But my whole thing is, I think everybody should be entitled to their own decisions. And um, I just hope that uh, we could find some clarity in this in the near future, man. I just wanted to shed some light on this um, and chop it up with you guys, man. You know what I mean? Uh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. If y'all want to do some Q&A or something, man, talk to me, people. I'm here. I'm here for a little bit longer, man. My man, B.Y., my man, Charles Brewer, he be out. Oh, shit, I didn't even see this, man. Charles Brewer, what's good, champ? My man, Charles Brewer in here. It, it, it's crazy, man. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. What's your opinion on this, man? What do you guys think, man? Do you think, you know, like, where do we go with this? What do you guys suggest? You feel me? Man, so they messing up that money, man. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's to me, it's to me, it's deeper than money, man. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong, the money's important, but you know, it's it, it's more so like, you know, you give you give a little bit, then they want more, and they want more, and it's like, when does it end? You feel me? That's the issue. When does it end? You know, I work at the gym, and my employer doesn't require me to vax, but it's mandated to everybody to be vaxxed to work out the gym. Laugh out loud. So I can train people, but yeah, it, 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 it yeah, it's just getting weird. <laughs> to say the least, Eddie, it is getting weird, man. Um, who knows, man? Turn to God, never take it. If you got faith, you're going to probably crack. Yeah, you know, that's true, man. But at the same time, man, you know, you got to talk about, like, what are you going to do when, when you want to do? Like, listen, this is what's crazy. I was in Puerto Rico and they wouldn't let me go in like three of my, you know, three of my favorite restaurants and uh, the casino. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it was getting crazy. You can die in the ring, but people are worried about COVID. It's stupid, really. I'm not sure what you're trying to say, uh, Milo. I don't know, man. But listen, guys, man, I'm I'm going to get out of here. I just want to do that quick little chop up with BY, man. I want to say thank you to everybody for pulling up, man. And we'll talk some more about this.